Greetings, you two. On the way home from work this morning, driving home at the snowstorm for, for, for a whole lot of extra fun, I was listening to New Hampshire Public Radio, as I do every day. And it being MLK Day, they were showing, they were playing a number of clips of some of his more famous speeches. And at least one that wasn't so famous. In fact, they just recently found it. I guess it had been missing for the last 50 years. Someone had had a copy stored on actual cellophane tape, which was in really bad shape, and they were able to save it and then put it and digitally master it onto a CD, so we'll have it for posterity. But the first bit they played was really emotional to me. It, it really had that content to MLK's voice when he got excited. And it, he says, I've heard that the greatest thing about America is that we have the right to protest for our rights. And I have to agree with Mr. King, or Dr. King. And the second quote was in a more measured tone. It was a, a speech given before a college uh, discussing how the integration laws were going to affect, you know, the people that he was speaking to, the college students graduating. I believe it was a commencement speech. And he says that we must be maladjusted, that we cannot settle for the, the status quo, that we cannot adapt to religious prejudice or bigotry. I can echo those feelings as well. Dr. King and I have a lot in common when it comes to our opinion about what you should, how, what you should fight and how you should fight. Both of us believe in nonviolence. Both of us believe that the quiet man doesn't ever get heard and doesn't ever make any changes. So I'm not quiet. I have no idea if I'm going to change anyone, but I'm going to speak my mind, even if it is only on my personal channel here on YouTube. But of course, the most important topic for me right now when it comes to protesting for your rights is the gay community and their desire to have equal marital privileges here in America. And one of the things that surprises me the most, I think, is that there are other nations we can turn to. And we can point to them and say, you know, those nations have same-sex marriage, those nations have marital equality, and they're doing okay. For example, just north of me, if I believe, yeah, that's in that direction. Just north of me, oh, there's a compass on my ceiling, just north of me is an entire country that has same-sex marriage and they haven't fallen into the ocean. Now I had someone in, very recently comment that they felt that since the Netherlands had same-sex marriage, by the way, I wasn't even aware the Netherlands had it, um, which was a nice little bit of data, um, that they felt that it was undermining heterosexual marriage in the Netherlands and causing a drop in birth rates. Now, I asked for data on the injury of you know, heterosexual marriage. The person never replied. And I pretty much did everything but laugh right in his face when it came to the birth rate being dropped off. Because I don't know about you, but I don't think a gay couple being married is going to affect their ability to or not to have children. Lesbian couples, of course, can have twice as many kids as heterosexual couples can. And, of course, both male and female gay people can adopt. So I don't think it has any effect whatsoever on increasing or decreasing the overall population. The reality, of course, is that in every Western culture, birth rates have been dropping for decades. It has nothing to do with same-sex marriage. Nothing at all. But, you know, it was a nice try. It is that, you know, like, poking people in, in their hysteria button. Particularly if you, if you think about it with the Netherlands, obviously that means that there are fewer white people. So, you know, they just throw a little subtle racism in there, too, just for fun. And, you know, this person felt that somehow... And I've never been able to figure out how gay couples are undermining heterosexual marriages. Well, here's the reality. I'm a straight man. I'm married to a straight woman. 
We've been married for five years. We're really happy. We aren't perfect, we have our problems, and we work on them. Every day, a marriage is a job. And I don't care if every other couple on the planet, all 6.6 .6 billion people on the planet, and all 3.3 billion couples, if all of them were gay, it wouldn't affect my marriage at all. Because my marriage is about love. I love my wife. Nothing anyone does or says legally can change that. Now someone could hurt one of us, and that would affect my marriage. But short of that, I'm not going to stop loving my wife. I don't care how many people get married. I don't care how many people don't. I don't care if the institution of marriage itself falls out of fashion and nobody does it anymore. I'm not getting divorced. I love my wife. I enjoy being married to her. And that's what really this is to me. It's about people who love each other wanting to publicly declare their love. The fact that marriages also have a whole lot of rights attached to them is potentially a separate issue. But they do. And I believe it's something like there are 1,400 separate marital rights by being married in America that are being denied to same-sex couples because they can't get married everywhere. And I'm not sure if uh, same-sex unions have all the same rights. They have some of them. I'm not sure if they have all of them. Um, but I firmly believe that Dr. King would approve of this fight. Would approve of me sitting here in my, my little office looking into my camera and trying to convince people to be open-minded, to be accepting, to be tolerant, to not be a bigot. I think that he would accept that. I think he would encourage it. And while I won't say that I think he'd be proud of me, I at least think I'm, he might smile. And you know, a smile from Dr. King, that would be a whole lot of greatness, wouldn't it?